Hello, Alchemists. Welcome back to our series on Phoenix Live View. Now, something new I've been seeing is that there is a dashboard, which I knew was going to be coming, but I didn't see any official announcement. And it seems you can already get started and start to use it as long as you have at least 010 for a Phoenix Live View. And you should be good. So I'm going to show you guys how to install it, how to configure it. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead. Let's get started. First thing, of course, is add in the Phoenix Live Dashboard and point it to GitHub because there's no official release yet. Phoenix Framework, Phoenix Live Dashboard. And the last thing to do is to have an override here because this is actually pointing to GitHub, at least GitHub version, and set this to true. And run make steps git. Perfect. And then you need to uh, configure the live dashboard into your router. So you go to your router. And you need to import phoenix.live dashboard.router. And then within your pipeline, of course, you need to have the live dashboard and also which path. I'm just going to do slash dashboard, make it easy. Um, and that should be enough for us to start to see something. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn on my server. Okay, so now our app is up and running. Then we can go to slash dashboard. And here we go. It's a very, very nice looking dashboard. This one really reminds me of, of basically the observer. There was a live observer one. This is pretty close. You have some idea of how much of your atoms are being used, ports, processes, etc. It's quite cool. The version of Phoenix you're running, the dashboard is you know basically what what the dashboard version is and what your Elixir version is is quite cool. And then you can also get an idea of the processes, which is also really cool. You can see the reductions, basically, really just like the just like the uh, observer you get. Now, what else is quite cool is you can actually start to get some information about your requests. There is a little bit of setup, though. If you go to here and go go to enable, as you see, it tries to go to hex docs, which it, you don't have yet. But I have loaded up over here. And not for this one, this is something in the future, but there is a request logger, so that's what this one's talking about. It's pretty straightforward to add in. You can basically just do this, copy this, go back to the code, and you go to your endpoint. And I'm just going to paste it right here. And now, if we go back to the website, Refresh. Well, nothing's going to happen, so let's just restart it. Okay. Now you'll see that we have the request logger working. There's two things you can do. One is that you can use this kind of token style. Go to here, so we go to localhost, and then we just paste that in, and then we can get some information about the request. You see it's right away. Or you can turn on the cookie one, and with that one, you don't have to have this request in here. You can just use the pages as you'd like. And you see they keep coming up in here so you can start to get some information about your website and how things are going. That's really cool. Um, and finally, in another video, I would like to start to show you guys some of the metrics. I need to go through this over some time, but I thought I would just show you guys how to install it, some simple things you can do, some of the things you get out of the box. And yeah, I think that's good enough for right now. So I'll catch you guys next time. Please subscribe if you haven't. And yeah, see you then. Bye. Hi. Please feel free to ask us any questions about Elixir, Flutter, or anything else in programming. Here is our YouTube channel, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. We will answer your questions every Friday. Ya mantai, ge duck man all. Your wenti, Jita Wen Wong.